Okay, today we will talk about how COVID-19 pandemic put small island developing states in dire straits. It's a very, very bad situation right now and we will talk about uh, this in this episode. So stay with me and uh, you will get a report and this report is the latest report on this item. So if you want to uh, know everything which is happening on small island development states due to the COVID pandemic. Stay with me in this episode. Hi, my name is Rundi Kalmira, and in this episode, we talk about data analysis and policy. Uh, last week I was not uh, available, but um, this week I'm back, and in this week I'm going to show you about uh, show you a report about the situation of small island states. Um, so let me go to that uh, report. The COVID-19 pandemic puts small island developing states in dire straits. Are you living on a small island economy? Are you living on Curacao in the Caribbean, St. Lucia, Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, any island in the Caribbean, Jamaica? As you know, we have created a, a macroeconomic framework for Turks and Caicos and Jamaica. Uh, in our latest edition of the Caribbean Strategic Boardroom. And the Caribbean Strategic Boardroom is an eight-week program where I teach high achievers in the Caribbean, high po achievers, achieving policy advisors, um, how to gather data, how to interpret data, how to analyze data, how to simulate the economy, how to write policy papers, and... This episode is very important because what is the state of the economy? What is the state of the situation? So most of the time, the problem that policy advisors have is what is the state and how does it compare to other um, regions, other regions and other uh, countries in the region. So it is very good situation where you have a, an, a global report on the situation and where we can discuss that report. So let me share that report with you. I'll share my screen. And here you see the report, and the report is, um, I have put the section about the small island development states. This report is from UNDESA. I will share this uh, report with you in the show notes of this episode but you see this report is 121 pages and let's look at the pages regarding the small island development states so first of all small island development states account for one percent of the global population of the world population and they represent 20 percent of the united nations so they are very very important and here is a summary here is a summary of the situation the key messages so covid 19 is posing significant health and economic risks to small island development states um, uh, there is a sharp fall in tourism revenues uh, and remittances uh, flows for small island development states. Um, that, as you know, those remittances are very important for the balance of payments for uh, receiving foreign exchanges. The people um, who are not working, they might have fam fam family abroad who send them remittances. So remittances indicator is a very important indicator for the balance of payments. The balance of payments gives the transaction between small islands and the rest of the world. So high debt servicing bur burdens of many small islands will weaken. Um, so debt defaults. So that's the situation right now also in Curacao where I live. You have a huge debt 
because the revenues have decreased, tourism has decreased, the oil refinery is not um, uh, operational right now, and uh, the expenditures for supporting the private sectors and also for support, supporting the citizens has um, increased. So increasing re um, uh, expenditures and decreasing revenues means that your deficits go to the roof and then you also have debt. Now in the situation of Curacao, we have a huge negotiation with the Netherlands who are going uh, to support us with debt uh, relief with loans however not debt receipts with loans however there is a negotiation with the Netherlands regarding this topic because the Netherlands they want a structural reform so you will see that the resiliency of small island economies and also the finances is critical because in these situations, most small islands have shown that they are not able to support their citizens without external financing. The situation of Curaçao, Aruba, St. Martin is, um, the Dutch Caribbean is like that. So the key message here is that we need to be resilient. We need to have strong private sector uh, strong enterprises, strong private sector that generates enough uh, revenues when there is no COVID. And we also need to uh, invest in our economy so that we can cope with things like COVID in the future because this will not be the last uh, pandemic. Small islands in the Caribbean have, uh, often they have hurricanes. A hurricane is like a pandemic for those, those small islands. So the key message here is that we need to have flexible uh, and uh, resilient infrastructures for the long term. Right now we are only coping with a, with a COVID pandemic, but we need to invest in making our infrastructure, making our government services more, more, more resilient. So here you see also many small island economies ha are dependent on food imports because they don't produce their own imp uh, food. They are dependent on, for instance, uh, food imports from the United States. So you see that the COVID pandemic has shown that there is a uh, a challenge for ensuring food security. Now, what does it mean? It means that we need to develop agriculture. We need to develop um, um, ways to produce our own fruit and, uh, and vegetables, at least part of the uh, food that we import. Um, we need to produce ourselves. I don't believe that we are going to be able to produce 100% of the food, but this is uh, a, a, a thing that we need to do, uh, invest in agriculture, develop agriculture, maybe have managed farms uh, uh, with new technology in agriculture to get our food resiliency uh, to improve that. Pandemic re response will constrain the fiscal space. Now, this is a very, very critical thing. Fiscal, we already talked about it, the revenues are going to go down and the expenditures going up. And the scaled up international development cooperation will remain critical for ensuring small island um, economies. So this is very important. This is very important, already the highlights. Now let's show a couple of, uh, of figures. Here you see the number of uh, deaths in selected country groups. This is good. As a policy advisor, you want to see the different regions and you want to see how you compare with different regions. Now, we are small island development states are better than Western uh, Asia, uh, at least. Um, but there are more, relatively more um, deaths uh, for the small island development states because on the, this axis, you see the the COVID-19 related deaths per 100,000. So this 
is huge in small island development states. I think we need to invest in our health systems because COVID has shown uh, us that our health systems cannot cope with uh, things like pandemic. Now, if we want to have strong tourism sectors, those tourists, tourists they come from development, uh, developed states and they want good health systems. You're not going to travel if your, your kids can become sick and you cannot uh, travel home very soon. Now, for instance, Curacao has the Curacao Medical Center. We have a brand new medical center that is an investment which is good uh, and it has made us more resilient. Our health system is more resilient. So what else do we have? We have some things in here. The projected GDP growth related to country groups. So this is saying that the small island development states is expecting a minus 7, 4.7%. Now I can tell you for Curacao, Aruba, St. Martin, for Curacao we have at least minus 15, maybe minus 20% of GDP growth. So this is the average, but I believe for Curacao, some islands it can be minus 20 this is uh these figures are being adjusted all the time nobody can tell us right away how much it, it's going to be i have done some calculations with my macroeconomic model of curacao and st martin uh, and also for other macroeconomic models that i have uh, and you see when you decrease the number of tourists uh, it's 75% or maybe 100% compared to 2019, then you will end up in minus 15, minus, between minus 15 and minus 20%. Um, so these are things that we can calculate right now. Now let's move to some of the things that are shown here. And I wanna show you here a summary so what is happening is that the health issues are being transmitted to the economy. So that's actually what's going to happen because the health issues mean, for instance, tourism uh, revenue is going to decrease, has decreased. That's because the borders are closed. Nobody wants to become sick. And then you have your main source of revenues is going to decrease now let's look at aruba for instance aruba has decided to open their borders for the united states what we have seen immediately is that there are um, people infected because the united states is very the the incidence of infection is very high there immediately you see more people in aruba infected and then because there is a tra transaction between Curacao and Aruba, we have seen uh, two or three people uh, basically who has been infected due to this. Now, that means that you have a risk because when you want to open the economy because you want to start the economy again, you want to open the economy for the United States, or for other regions, then you will see immediately that maybe the COVID is coming to, to come again. So it is balancing between your health of your population and your economic growth. Um, you see falling remit remittances uh, flows. Um, that's also going to affect the, the, the economy. And you see shrinking external borrowing options. Uh, in the case of Curacao, Aruba, Aruba has borrowed uh, externally and has some debt and needs to be paid back. And Curacao can only borrow from the Netherlands, but we need liquidity right now. We need to borrow. We need to borrow because otherwise the government cannot pay the expenses. And that is very critical. Um, so from the other hand, you see, for the other side, you see high debt servicing costs. Uh, so if you are an, an island or a small, 
um, state that already has a huge debt, then you will have some problems during these COVID pandemics and these uh, global uh, shutdowns because your debt servicing needs to continue and, um, and you will have re less revenues. So this is actually how it is squeezing. This uh, picture shows actually how a health problem can be converted into a fiscal and financial problem and economic problem. Now it can become a monetary problem also because if you don't have foreign reserves anymore, if your tourism or your main sources of revenues is shut down, imagine you don't have revenues, dollars, euros coming in and you still need dollars and euros to import because you need to import oil, you need to import uh, food, you need to import other stuff. That means that your flow of reserves will be higher out of the country than in coming in the country. That can mean that your foreign reserves can become lower than the three months uh, import coverage and then the COVID pandemic can become a monetary problem because the stability of your currency can be at risk. So that's uh, the situation. Now, let me show you um, just briefly, let me just mention to you just briefly that all these things can be calculated with an economic model. So I want to I wanna go back here, outside here, and tell you. So with an economic model, with an economic model, what you do is you have all these indicators and all these things happening all the same time. And with an economic model, you can estimate what the effects um, are. So imagine you have dropped in remittances. You have a drop in tourism, stay over tourism, through, uh, cruise tourism. You have uh, maybe... Um, higher oil prices but the oil prices are like likely i uh, lower uh, right now but imagine you have higher um, oil prices now all those effects together you want to calculate what is the impact on the gross domestic product what is the impact on the revenues what is the impact on the liquidity what is the impact on the cash flow what is the of the government what is the impact on the debt what is the impact on employment because employment and unemployment will affect the expenditure so that what you do is in a economic framework so the spreadsheets we're talking about the macroeconomic models we're talking about are nothing more than organization of all those indicators putting them in equations and then trying to analyze simulate what is going to happen in the economy and we also have like a framework till 2030. So what's going to happen? And alternatively, you can also say, what do we need to do so that we can survive after this economic pandemic? So with an economic spreadsheet, and we have created 12 macroeconomic models already. Uh, the most recent from Turks and Caicos, Jamaica. And we're working on the one of Belize right now. Those macroeconomic models can help you with a discussion about what your economy needs to uh, be, um, how do you need to invest, how much do you need to invest, how much investment. In the case of Curacao, for instance, the Minister of Economic Development has said that he needs 900 million guilders to invest, private investment and uh, public investment. So is that enough? The Netherlands are saying that they're going to give Curaçao, St. Martin and Aruba, um, they're going to give us 350 million euros for seven years. So if you divide that, that is basically 50 million yeah, in seven years, that's basically 50 million per uh, year. And if you divide it by three, 50 million divided by three, now that's not enough for pro 
providing a, a, a huge impact on the economy. So those numbers that we are getting, about 350 million, they are probably not enough to increase the demand to grow the economy. I can tell you that because those numbers, we can simulate those numbers and I'm familiar with those numbers that when you simulate those numbers, it is not going to um, balance the effect of 75% of uh, stay over tourism decreasing. You understand? So it needs to be much more. And you will only see that when you are looking at the total economy, when you are looking at the total numbers. And still with me till the end, and I will show you what are the main indicators that you need to focus on so that you can then get a general picture of the economy. So I'm going again to the, 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 the picture. We are already 21 minutes into this show. So I'm going to show you again the GDP growth in the United States relative to the growth uh, tourism uh, arrivals in the Caribbean. Now this picture is only giving you some, some indications because those most of those islands are dependent on the United States. Now what is happening is because if you are very dependent on the United States and the United States cannot, um, uh, there are... There is a high incidence in the United States of the COVID pandemic. Now you are in a problem. For instance, Aruba is highly dependent on the economy of the United States. And the, the dependence on the United States is also on the food and goods and services because almost all the goods and services of the Caribbean islands are imported from the United States. Now, Curacao has a different profile because Curacao is more dependent on the Netherlands for its, um, its tourists. So here you see that if we only are focused on the United States for our tourist arrivals and for our food, then if something happens with the United States, we are going to feel the, that effect a lot. So this means that after the COVID pandemic, we need to diversify our economies to more other, other regions, maybe Asia, maybe China, maybe China. Although it is very, uh, it's a problem to, to arrive from China to the Caribbean, we need to focus on diversifying our economy to other regions than only United States, maybe Canada, maybe Europe. We need to focus on this. So this tells you. Now let's, um, the direct and indirect impact, this is also a good indicator. Tourism sector contribution of, to the GDP and selected small island economies. Now this will show you that for instance, the Maldives, Maldives is like the most uh, dependent on tourism. Uh, and... Uh, it is most dependent. Now, the direct impact is probably direct related to tourism, but there are other sectors that are delivering to tour tourism. That is the indirect impact. Now, the indirect impact is also when you take away 75% of the GDP, uh, of 75% uh, of, of tourism, what is going to happen is that those people will not receive uh, the direct people working in the restaurants etc will not receive any uh, um, revenues and those people will also not spend on goods and services so that's the indirect effect so the indirect effects is uh, is very uh, and that can also be calculated so fragile external balance the external balance is how much do small island economies, how much do they trade with the world? Exports minus imports. That is uh, exports of goods and services. So um, on the revenue side, you see a huge part, which is tourism. 
and on the rev on the expenditure side you also see the goods and services for the, those tourists and also the goods and services of course for the rest of the economy so the trade balance this is the trade balance as a percentage of GDP now here you see minus 25 percent in 2008 now I can tell you that Curacao is around minus 19 percent of GDP so Curacao is is um, is also uh, in this range now I know that because I have a macroeconomic model for Curacao and I've been analyzing this and with a macroeconomic model you can also make the forecast for 2020 2021 22 etc for all those indicators so this is a huge problem of the uh, the for the small island economies now i have one thing which is other services we could focus next to only tourism we could focus on services but what kind of services can we export? We could export blockchain services. We could export um, uh, knowledge about the solar uh, sector. We in the Caribbean have a high irradiation. That means that the sun is here for more hours in the, in the, during the day than other regions. Uh, maybe only Saudi Arabia, Arabia and Africa are same as 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 uh, the caribbean but compared to the netherlands compared to european um, uh, um, north european uh, countries we have a high irradiation that means that we need to be uh, the leaders in solar energy we need to be the leaders in researching and testing solar panels solar technologies etc and you don't see that happening you see that happening in curacao curacao has a lot uh, a high percentage of re renewable energies but i believe this can be done blockchain is a new technology i'm studying blockchain i'm studying uh, for instance hyperledger the technology the use cases how businesses can uh, make money with a blockchain and i'm telling you we need to invest in those sectors in those services we used to be tax havens i have read a book where we say that curacao was one of the first international financial sectors and we invented the financial offshore but right now curacao is only one percent uh, uh, of less than one percent of the financial uh, ex export sector is done via curacao we already have we oh uh, we still have a lot of international companies uh here but having an international financial services sector uh which is uh based on tax evasion or lowering tax that is not the good business model anymore you should look at what estonia is doing estonia is providing services to the world uh, e-resident residency um, for Estonia for you can move your company there you can become a, an e-citizen uh, of Estonia and there will be accountants doing your accounting uh, you will be paying tax like normal but you will receive a great service for a government by the government uh, you will receive kind of a, uh, a, a deluxe VIP service by the government. That is what the government needs to be. The NEF government of small island states needs to copy the, um, the infrastructure of Estonia, the services that are provided, and you will see that there are many, many businesses going there. I've seen, I've read that about 50,000 businesses internationally have already moved to Estonia. At least they have 50,000 uh, e-residents uh, in, in Estonia. So what does it mean? It means a new way for uh, delivering services next to only tourism. So you see here external debt services burden of selected country groups and again small islands are 
5.3%. I believe this 5.3% that this is only the external debt servicing. Debt servicing, that means not the debt, but that is a huge party. I mean, 5.3% of your GDP, of your gross domestic product, of your total income is on debt servicing. Uh, that is a huge, uh, that's more than other uh, regions. So we have a problem with debt. We have a problem with debt in the Caribbean, in the small island development states. And uh, those small island development states are, of course, not only the Caribbean, but there are a lot of small island development states. I believe there are 58 official small island development states that we are focusing on. So look at this. Again, the debt servicing, bilateral, multilateral, a huge portion, and then private creditors. I mean, what is going to happen is that Moody's and uh, Fitch, those rating agencies, they can downgrade your debt. And we have already seen that with Suriname recently. We have seen that with downgrades of the Aruban debt and um, islands like Curaçao and San Martin who don't have external debt financed by other than the Netherlands, they should notice this because once you have a problem with private creditors, you want to um, loan money outside um, your borders, you want to loan money on the capital uh, um, uh, on the capital markets but this capital market that means that you are being watched by Fitch and Moody's and once you downgrade once they downgrade you it means that you are going to feel the effects on your fiscal financial and capital account I mean people who have foreign direct investments and they are not going to invest in, into your country anymore if you are downgraded to, to junk. Uh, pension funds are not going to invest. Foreign uh, multinational uh, companies trade uh, who are uh, listed on exchange uh, exchanges are not going to invest into your country anymore if you are downgraded to junk. That is the case when you are... Uh, Lending money only from the Netherlands, uh, that is, that is a, an in, internal um, uh, discussion. But when, once you are lending money on the capital market, a lot of politicians want to do that. We want to, to, uh, to, to get a loan somewhere there. It's going to affect your economy. So these are very, very important things. And they are also saying leaving no country behind. So I am asking you, what needs to happen? Do we need to have a special um, United Nations resolution for small island development states? What do we need to have? Do we need to have more help? So this is another se secret, another uh, type of um, country, a landlocked developing countries this is the end of that so if you want to stay in contact with me listen to this following episode so we have seen um, this uh, episode it has been great to uh, talk to you and um, hopefully the quality has been better than uh, previous uh, episodes because I am improving this all the time. So we are going to share this, uh, this episode with you. I'm going to put the, it into the show notes. It is uh, from um, Undesa. But before you leave, if you want to start analyzing your economy and if you are living on one of the um, of the 12 small island developing states and um, some are not islands but Belize, St. Vincent and the Grenadine, Turks and Caicos, Jamaica, all the eight islands of the Eastern Caribbean, St. Lucia, Grenada, 
St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dominica, Antigua, Barbuda, Anguilla, and uh, uh, Montserrat. And if you are living on Curacao, St. Martin, if you are living on one of those 12 islands, small island states, then I have something for you. You have to go to the Caribbean Strategic Boardroom.com forward slash waitlist, and there you will get the, tw the, the 54 indicators. And those 54 indicators are the indicators that you need to collect to get a complete framework. If you are a, a, a policy advisor, you are struggling with data, you are struggling, what kind of data do I need? What kind of data do I, do I need to focus on? And you have many, many spreadsheets and you don't know exactly what kind of data. I have created a cheat sheet with the 54 variables that you need to focus on. Now that cheat sheet is very important because we have collected those 54 variables for all those 12 economies that I am um, um, that I've already co um, collected. And soon the Caribbean Strategic Boardroom, it's an eight-week program. It will open, and we will be delivering a great experience, a free experience. And once you deliver that free experience, we will help you during one week to solve a problem, to see a different perspective of the Caribbean, to show the Caribbean, all those 12 islands, in a different way. It will be a great experience, especially if you are living on one of those 12 islands. It will be a great experience, a community of people working to discussing the situation of those islands. And soon, soon we will be opening the only way to get on that list to get in that free experience will be once you go there caribbean strategic boardroom.com and then forward slash wait list if you have stayed till right now that means that you qualify to become part of that free experience and if in that free experience, it's going to be, we are going to really be talking about the challenges that we are focusing on. We are, we, we are the challenges that we are struggling with also. And this experience will soon open. I expect to have many, many, many people discussing during one week what is the challenges and what are the challenges that we are uh, uh, facing okay and you will need that cheat sheet you will need that cheat sheet to enter to be able to understand what is going to happen because it's going to be very very interesting so go grab that cheat sheet and that cheat sheet will be your invitation to go into that free experience and once the doors open for the Caribbean Strategic Boardroom.com. You will be invited. Okay, so go grab that cheat sheet. If you have any questions, let me know. And this is it for today. And next week we will be. We will try to be at four o'clock. Today I was a little bit uh, later, but we will try to be at four o'clock. So go grab that cheat sheet and then share this episode with more people because if you know people living in the Caribbean, living in those islands, then you need to share this, uh, this uh, episode and you need to also share this uh, great report with them. So see you next week. Till next week. Bye. Same time, same place.